Hey everyone, this is Brad Roybal and we are back with another video for Unit 2 Pong Project. This time we're going over how to complete Checkpoint 2. Um, the two objectives of this part of the project are one, we want the ball to speed up anytime it hits a paddle. So we actually need to add functionality right here inside of this block for the ball sprite so that it actually has some kind of action when it hits the paddles. And then two, we want to make sure that the game actually resets whenever the ball hits either the left or right edge. Um, as you can see, I've got a couple of different um, variables selected up here. Um, that's going to make it really easy to troubleshoot and figure out what we want to do. Um, but, you know, kind of walk through how we get there. But the first thing that we're going to do is I want to add an action any time that we hit either one of the Pong paddles, because that's going to be very important going forward. We want the ball to actually, you know, interact with the paddles rather than just going through them right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an if statement up here, and then I'm also going to use an operator. So I want to check in this if statement if the ball hits either the left or the right paddle. Um, we have very useful uh, sensing actions over here that make that very possible. So I'm going to put touching right there and put another block right there. And these touching blocks, basically what they're gonna do, as we've seen before in other videos, is they're gonna return true if the sprite right here, the sprite that we're interacting with, with which is the Pong ball currently, is touching either player one or player two. So this uh, if statement's gonna be activated if either one of these two conditions right here are true. So what we wanna do if the Pong ball hits either one of these paddles is one reflect and two uh, speed up. So what I'm going to start with is my motion. What I want to do is point the ball in a different direction once it hits. Obviously we know in a classic Pong game if the ball is coming from this direction right here and it hits a Pong paddle we want it to reflect off rather than just hit and go in some random direction, right? So what I'm gonna do to sort of, sort of show that, I'm gonna click play first. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna drag this paddle down right here. This ball right now is going in the direction of 238 degrees. So if we click our point direction to see the coordinate system, you can see that 238 is about right here. It's between 225 and 240. So what we wanna do is bounce it off in this opposite direction over here. Now to get that, we use a pretty simple formula. I'm gonna go ahead and snap that into place. What I'm going to do is go to operators, go to minus. I want to point in direction. And what I want to do is go 360 degrees minus whatever angle we have right now. So I can go at the um, opposite of it from when we hit the paddle. So we're going to do point in direction, 360 minus, and then of course we can go to motion. And direction is a pre-built variable that we can drag over and set right there. So now that we have direction in there, if I go ahead and click start, Oh, not right there, but instead right here. As we can see, when the Pong ball is going to hit my paddle, it now goes in the corresponding correct direction. So I'm going to go ahead and click stop because I don't think that was a very good angle to start at. That's a little bit better. You can see it's going to bounce off in the correct direction and it's going to continue. So the second thing that we want to do for this part of the step for actually having it speed up whenever it hits the pong paddles is actually increase the speed. So to do so, we make a variable. As you can see, I've already created pong speed right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have pong, I'm going to have pong speed set when we first start. So if I go to variables, we have this very convenient set block right here that we've used before. Set pong speed to, I'm going to set it to three initially because I feel like that's a pretty good number to start out at. Snap it back into place. I want to take another set block right here so that every time I hit this if block where I'm touching either player one or player two, not only do I change direction, but I want to set pong speed right here to itself plus one. So as you can see, I'm going to drag out this plus operator, snap pong speed in right there enter one and now I'm setting pong speed to whatever it started at which is three to pong speed plus one the last thing I'm gonna do is click and duplicate pong speed and of course we actually want the ball to move at the pong speed variable um, number so we're gonna have it move pong speed steps so every time we go through this forever loop and it touches either player one or player two it's gonna increase its speed by one so let's go ahead and see that in action 
So right now, of course, if it hits the edges, it does nothing. But as you can see, Pong speed's incrementing, and when it glitches out like that, it is going much higher and higher. So for our project, of course, we don't want it to speed up like that. Um, you know, even if it doesn't glitch out or it goes behind and hits a bunch of times, it's still going to go pretty fast at plus one. So instead of plus one, I want to do plus 0.25. That's going to give me a little bit more speed. So let's go ahead and click. Another great idea for this project, of course, is to make it so that the ball goes in a uh, agreeable angle when you first start. So it kind of, you know, maybe instead of pick random one to 360, you have a slightly different range. But for now, this will do. But as you can see, Pong speed is increasing. You can see the counter right there. It's now at 4.75, 5, and it's now at 5.25, 6.5, and so on and so on. Um, and so that is how we complete the first part of Checkpoint 2. Tune into my next video where we're going to go over the second part of Checkpoint 2, which is how to um, basically reset the game whenever the ball hits either the left or the right side of the screen.